Up next here on Evo MMA, hometown favorite Ben Smooth Henderson takes on Diego Saraiva in what is sure to be a thriller for the crowd. I fight because it's the purest and most uncompromised uh, form of competition there is. I think that's what I love to do and um, I have the heart for. My game plan is going to be stand up, beat him up, and go to the ground, beat him up. That's pretty much it. I know he's a wrestler and uh, he's a tough guy and uh, I think it should be a good fight. I'm not really good at the predictions, I'm, all, I'm always wrong. I know it's going to end with my hand raised though. Put on a good fight, you know, I'm ready for, for a war, I'm ready for anything, anything he brings I'm ready for. Getting ready for Ben Henderson versus Diego Saraiva. Jamie Henderson has shown uh, just an impressive ability to, to get guys to tap out. It's incredible. Yeah, well, he's got a really rich ground game, and uh, being a college All-American for wrestling, uh, he can really dictate where this fight goes, whether it be standing on the feet or taking the guy down and getting it on the ground. And tonight he takes his, uh, his career to a whole new level. He's fighting a, a UFC veteran in Diego Saraiva. This isn't a guy who's going to lay down and take, uh, take an easy loss. No, Diego Saraiva is a great, great fighter. Uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu under Novum Yo. Um, he says one of his favorite fighters, and the fighters that he, one of the fighters he wants to emulate is BJ Penn. So he's got a really rich ground game. So if Ben Henderson does take it, down, take it to the ground, he could be in a world of trouble. Time to take a look at the tail of the tape for this fight between Ben Henderson and Diego Saraiva. Saraiva, two years the senior of Henderson, looking at the height advantage, three inches going to Ben Henderson, probably not going to make a big difference, two pounds as well, and uh, one inch in the reach advantage, and that probably will not play a big factor in this fight this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds of fighting in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner from Glendale, Arizona, with a record of five wins, one loss, weighing in at 156 pounds, Ben Smooth Henderson. In the blue corner from Atlanta, Georgia, with a record of 12 wins, seven losses, and one draw. Weighing in at 154 pounds, he is a three-time UFC veteran, the octopus, Diego Saraiva. Henderson and Saraiva ready to get it on here at Evo MMA, the debut event. And uh, again, both of these guys starting out slow. One thing that impresses so many people about Ben Henderson, Jamie, is they say he's so strong. He doesn't look that strong, but he's just got this unruly strength, kind of like a Matt Hughes. Yeah, you know what? I think that's just, you know, years and years of wrestling, having to lift bodies and throw throw bodies around. You just, you get you get a, just a really natu natural, like, uh, poor strength. Uh, nice leg kicks. Henderson's really using his kicks. Nice clinch also by Henderson. Henderson's doing a really good job, um, you know, u utilizing the clinch and staying on the outside. Those, those are nice leg kicks. You don't expect that from a, from a guy who's supposed to be a quote-unquote ground fighter or wrestler. 
Absolutely, some early combinations connecting, some early knees connecting, and of, of course in a match like this, if it does go all three rounds, every little punch, every little kick, that puts you uh, just one point ahead on the judges' scorecards. Yeah, I, I don't really like the way Diego Saraiva's keeping his hands so low, he's not really moving his head that much. Seems like he's it's a he's really staying still and a really easy target for Henderson to uh, to hit. So I, I if I was Diego Saraiva, I'd be looking to try and get this fight to the mat as soon as possible. Ben Henderson, of course, coming off a very impressive win at MFC 17, where he took on Ricardo Tolon. And uh, I had never really seen this before. It kind of reminded me of when uh, Matt Hughes fought Carlos Newton. Henderson was caught in an armbar uh, and just lifted Torleone up, slammed him down, and it was just an impressive defense. He actually forced Torleone to stand up right out of the armbar. Wow. Well, you know, Henderson's got, look at, look at his legs, man. He's got big legs. He's a, he's a strong kid. He looks like, He's a big 55 pounder. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if that kid walks around 175, 180. You know, he looks much bigger, much bigger than Diego right now. Uh, Diego, nice, nice tri flying triangle attempt to uh, Uma Plata, pulling the guard there, uh, pull, looking for the for the triangle attempt, but also grabbing onto the cage in the meantime. And uh, our referee there stepping in to make sure that doesn't continue. You know, I, this is what I see Diego trying to do, try and get this fight to now, whether it's by takedown um, or pulling guard. Henderson's, uh, he knows Henderson's got a real rich wrestling background, so he's probably doesn't, he probably doesn't think he can take him down. But, you know, this is MMA, and when you're throwing punches, anybody can get caught. But I definitely see him pulling guard more, more so in this fight than trying to shoot for the takedown. Henderson right now uh, fighting from the perch, so to speak, just landing some uh, real hard overhand shots on Diego Saraiva. And Jamie, when you're throwing punches from this angle, is it stronger than a stand-up punch? Do you feel it a little less? What, what's the story there? Well, it's, it's, it's just gravity, man. It's basic physics coming down. You got your power plus, you know, coming down on that punch. You can get your whole body behind it. So I'd say on the ground, you could definitely hit a lot harder than on your feet. But look at Diego using that nice, beautiful half-guard sweep with the butterfly hook. Nice sweep by Diego. Wow, utilizing the cage, trying to uh, keep Henderson against the cage. Maybe uh, probably looking to do some ground and pound from here, I would imagine. Absolutely. Uh, Diego Saraiva, another fighter who gets most of his wins by submission out of uh, the 12 of them he has coming into this fight, 10 of them by submission. So he's really just as comfortable on the ground as, as Ben Henderson is. You know, Henderson did a really good job getting off the mat right there, Andrew. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with this kid, with his, uh, with his ability just to, to avoid those, uh, those early submissions, man. That's when you're the most susceptible to submissions because you're dry. Later on in the fights, it's a lot harder to get caught in arm bars and triangles because you're all sweaty and slippery. And but one punch after another, uh, another right now coming down from Henderson, and he is landing them a square on the job, Diego Saraiva. You have to wonder how many of those he can take. Diego's doing a really good job utilizing that half guard, but Henderson is also doing a great job of keeping him at bay and avoiding, avoiding those sweeps. And that's just, you know, his wrestling ability and his scrambling ability uh, being able to stay out of those positions. Survivor right now clutching Henderson's ankle and uh, a little bit of an awkward position here for Henderson, but he is still using the fist and still using the elbows, uh, and it looks like we're going to have a stoppage here, maybe uh, strikes to the back of the head. Yeah, you know what, that's, a, that's kind of referee's discretion. I hear a lot of referees, and even different states have different rules. They say it's like the mohawk area, so from the point of the head all the way back to the spinal column, where you would have a mohawk is they say that's uh, considered back of the head to me that looked like more behind the ear side of the head but you know we're not there and we don't exactly have the best angle absolutely of course it's one of the complications of the unified rules of mixed martial arts once you let guys begin to throw punches on the ground every now and then something like this happens Saraiva indicating to the referee that he is uh, once again ready to go but if he needed it he would have had a full five minutes to recover you know i think this is actually better for henderson uh, getting the fight back on the feet you know you utilizing his uh his stand-up uh, skills that he definitely acquired from the lab training over there with alvin robinson you know he's he's got some he's got some top level competition i've actually had uh the pleasure of training with henderson he's he's a great athlete he was an awesome sparring partner for my last fight with marcus hicks of course jamie you have an extensive boxing background yourself a collegiate champion who, who's got the edge in the hand so far? Do you give it to Henderson? I give it to Henderson. He's just, he just seems like he's overall the better athlete in this. He's super athletic, real young. Oh, nice scramble right there. I like them. They're mixing it up. Ten seconds left in this nice. match. And uh, ten seconds left in the round, rather, and it comes to uh, 
an abrupt end here, a first round, and we saw a little bit of everything. We saw a little bit of the ground game, not at its best, but uh, certainly I think Ben Henderson surprising a lot of people this evening with his ability to throw. You know what? Yeah, he's definitely getting those punches off uh, really fast, rapid fire, doing a great job um, utilizing his reach and us utilizing his strength and playing into uh, Diego's weakness. But Diego, great, a black belt jiu-jitsu, you can never count him out, man. He, you know, he... You can get submitted at any time, and he was really utilizing that half guard and uh, working those sweeps. So I definitely see uh, Diego having the edge as far as the jiu-jitsu game goes. But, you know, Henderson, Henderson's only one punch away from ending this fight, for sure. And it looks like we are just about ready for round two as uh, these combatants get ready for uh, hopefully another exciting round of MMA action. Oh, you know, sign of respect and going out and touching gloves. They both obviously have a lot of respect for each other. The one thing I have to tell you, Jamie, that impresses me most, not only about the sport of MMA overall, but particularly when you look at a guy like Ben Henderson, is just the sportsmanship. Such a classy, classy guy outside of the ring. Very, very humble, very, very religious. And it, it really helps paint a new picture for the sport. It's not, you know, it's not cage fighting. It, it is a sport. It's not a spectacle. Oh, nice, nice kick by, uh, by Henderson. Yeah, I have to agree with you. We're not a bunch of, we're not definitely not a bunch of Neanderthals out here just trying to, trying to fight. We're, we're athletes and we just, we're competitors. And this is just another way for us light wrestlers being, being 157, you know, 155 pounds, 165 pounds. This is just another outlet for us to compete. Oh, a kick that misses from Saraiva. That one catches uh, again with the punch combination following up. And uh, Henderson's forced to backpedal a little bit here, but begins to explode with some uh, stuff of his own. Oh, nice, uh, nice takedown attempt. Oh, Henderson raining down, doing the ground and pound, doing a great job. Nice elbow by Henderson. This is great, man. This is the first time that Arizona has been able to see real MMA. Elbows, close fist punches on the ground. This is this is really this is really real treat for the fans for sure. And such great athletes fighting too. You bring up a very good point, Jamie. History in the making here tonight at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona. For the very first time, the unified rules of mixed martial arts employed. And uh, tonight, fans, uh, fans will see strikes on the ground. They will see punches on the ground, elbows on the ground. And uh, it's definitely going to make for a, a much more exciting night for the fans. Yeah, the, the only difference between this and you know, a UFC fight or the up kicks um, in this show, they were not, they're not allowed to use the up kicks from the ground to the face, which definitely could um, slow down someone's ground and pound or definitely uh, keep, them, keep them a little bit more off, you know, catch them off guard. Like we saw Nick Diaz do that to Drew Fickett a couple times mm -hmm. in their fight, up kicks from the ground. Uh, they can be pretty devastating, but this is still just an amazing, amazing uh, show show of MMA. Uh, this is MMA at its finest right here for sure. Henderson uh, just raining down punches again from the perch. It's interesting to me that uh, Saraiva hasn't pulled him into his guard, but I guess he just doesn't want to go there with Ben Henderson. You know, I think it's, it's not so much him trying to pull into the guard. It's Henderson posturing up, staying on his feet, and using that utilizing that leverage that he has uh, going from, you know, ground being on top and just coming down with those punches. You know, he knows that Diego's dangerous from his back, and so he's going to try and stay out of those positions, those dangerous positions. Henderson there may be looking to work to side control, but it seems like he prefers to just stand up and again, uh, rain down punches one after the other, and Saraiva certainly not in danger of having the fight stop, but may want to show a little bit of offense just to give the, the judges something to think about. Really, there's not really much you can do in that position, especially since up kicks are not, not legal. I mean, that's that's about the only thing he can do. Oh, trying to roll through for that knee bar. But uh, Henderson, Henderson's, he, he, it seems like he's one step ahead in this fight. Nice control. Nice control of those knees and the feet. Oh, looked like uh, Sarai was going for a, for a sweep, trying to pull butterfly guard right there. I think uh, I think the ref should stand these guys up, man. This, uh, oh, well, now Henderson's starting to do some work. Those are just hard punches from Henderson, jeez. You can hear them hitting one after the other, and uh, you have to wonder, again, how much of this can De uh, Diego Saraiva take? Well, Brazilians are definitely known for being tough, man. They definitely have a lot of fight in them for sure. So, uh, 
But, you know, I fight's only one punch away from ending, for sure. At any given time, anybody can be finished. And again, Henderson now beginning to pour it on. A little bit of a pause, but when, when Ben Henderson gets going, it is going to take a hell of a lot to stop him. Yeah, Diego's, Diego's not really doing much from here, man. He really needs to get it going. He's, he's definitely behind on the scorecards. And he lost the first round, I thought, and definitely uh, is being pretty much dominated this round. Um, he, he, needs to, he definitely needs to put, put uh, more, more of an offense together besides just laying there and taking, taking punches. Jamie, if you're Diego Saraiva right now, how do, you, how do you defend yourself? Again, 10 seconds left here in the match. How do you defend yourself from those punches that are being rained down? You know what, I would, I would go to, I, I would be trying to play a different kind of guard or using my feet to just keep him away. You know, you can't up kick, but you know, use him and push away on his hips and get, get back to your feet, do something. Uh, maybe even try and roll into him for a single leg, try and get a takedown from that position. Uh, there's, there's many things that he can do, but I think he's just so comfortable on his back and he's just, I think he's just waiting for Henderson to make a mistake, but that's not, that's not the way you should fight. You should always be on the offense like Henderson. He's constantly on the offense looking to finish the fight, and I think uh, Diego's just, just waiting, waiting to catch him and make a mistake. So here we are between rounds two and rounds three. Of course, round three will be the final round in this bout tonight, and you have to begin to wonder. I mean, if you're in Diego Saraiva's corner right now, you've got to be telling him you need something big here in the third round to pull this out. Yeah, Joe Riggs is uh, in his corner right now. Um, they're from the Lions, and I would... I think Joe Riggs, if I was Joe Riggs, I'd be telling Diego, you need to rally. We need to, um, we need to put some punches together. We need, to, we need a dominating performance in this round. We need to finish this fight, whether it be knockout or submission, because we are definitely losing. So um, hopefully, hopefully he comes out here with a little bit more fire. Round three, our third and final <coughs> round in this three-round bout between Ben Henderson and Diego Saraiva again. For most of this fight, we have seen Ben Henderson control the action. And really, Jamie, he's, he's controlled the pace of this fight. You know what you know what I like about Ben Henderson? He's not just throwing one punch at a time. He's coming in with combinations and using leg kicks. So he's constantly keeping um, Diego on the defense. If I, I mean, if I was Diego, I... I, you would have to close the distance and get off first. You can't just wait for him to wait for him to punch you. You got to You got to go. The flying knee attempt yeah. there, oh, uh, indicative of something we've seen a little bit earlier in this evening's show. Uh, but again, the flying knee attempt by Ben Henderson. Uh, that that's a way to end a fight with one strike. Oh well, for sure. We we definitely saw that earlier in the night with uh, with Seth Bisnitsky against uh, James Warfield. But um, you know, Henderson is the taller fighter, so I'd see that being a, an effective weapon. So. You know, good for him for trying it. And this is, I think this is a real, real turning point in Henderson's career. You know, being able to execute some of the striking that he's done in this fight against a top level uh, competitor, he'll be able to carry that on uh, in the future in his career. Again, Henderson just coming in and it's one combination after the other, whether it's punches, whether it's knees, he is definitely getting the better of these exchanges. And the other thing too, Jamie, that's impressive, when you see guys who aren't maybe UFC level, WEC level, strike force level fighters, sometimes in the third round their cardio begins to give and Ben Henderson looks like he could go another three rounds if he had to. He's an elite athlete. I mean, that's, that's all we can say. He's, he was well prepared and he trained hard for this fight and it shows because he looks the same way he did in the first round. Nice takedown, too. Nice transition. See those punches and those kicks, man. Got the guy, got Diego worried about, got him worried about the strikes, and so just left him open for the takedown. Earlier, Jamie, you made a very good point about Ben Henderson. Perhaps this could be the, the next turning point in his career. And, uh, of course, with Evo MMA here in the Phoenix area, taking this sport across Arizona, it's going to provide wonderful opportunities for, for fighters uh, of amateur level or pre-professional level uh, in their career to, to have that stage to go to a UFC or a WEC. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is amazing. What a time to be a fighter in Arizona. Uh, when I was coming into the sport six years ago, I didn't have a platform like Evo MMA. I had to go outsource my fights. I had to go to Canada and all, all across the country to get fights. So uh, they would le legitimize me because there were no legitimate organizations out here that could propel me in, into my career to go to take it to the next level. And, you know, Evo MMA is doing that for the Arizona fighters. And so we definitely got to give it up to Evo for uh, putting this show together and bringing this bring this broad spectrum of talent and bringing all these guys from all over the country together to one spot here in Arizona to really open the eyes to these fans. 
Sariva looks to be hanging on to that leg uh, in dear life for a sense, but again, no offense from Diego Sariva, or at least nothing significant in this round. No, Diego is definitely, he's, he's still utilizing that half guard. He's got a great half guard game, but he's looking to sweep when more so he should be looking to finish. Mm -hmm. He needs to be looking to finish right now. He's, he's definitely down on all the scorecards. He hasn't controlled, he hasn't controlled any part of this fight. Um, the closest he's got was that, that flying triangle in the very beginning of the first round, but that, that, was, that was really nothing on the scorecards. Right now, Diego Saraiva really, I mean, just needs to get it to his feet and probably go for that puncher's chance, one punch home run KO type deal. Or, you know, maybe get back to his feet and pull guard and try and try another attempt with the flying triangle, flying armbar. He needs to do something from here, but he's, he's definitely not doing enough to win this fight. It looks like he's just trying to get by. Nice half guard attempt once again, but you know, Henderson, Henderson's a great athlete and a great jiu-jitsu guy. You know, train over there at the lab with, with Alvin Robinson, who is a brown belt. So I, I just I just don't see Diego being able to really effectively get his jiu-jitsu or you know, you know, attack with his jiu-jitsu because um, Henderson's definitely prepared, comes from a good camp. And a low blow right now, uh, clearly accidental, as you could see Ben Henderson uh, almost going over to Sariva to check and see if he was okay. And again, if Sariva needs it, he does have a full five minutes to recover from uh, what seemed to be by, uh, by what I saw, Jamie. Tell me if you disagree, but it looked like an accident to me. It looked like a low blow, and that, and that happens. When you're throwing those knees from the clinch on the inside, it, it, that happens. But, you know, it was a... You know, great showing of sportsmanship, and once again, touching gloves. You know, they, they know it was an accident, and it happens. That's just part of the fight game. And the fight goes on here at EVO MMA, the evolution of mixed martial arts. Again, the unified rules for the first time this evening here in Phoenix, Arizona. Andrew Falzone alongside WEC lightweight champ Jamie Varner. And uh, so far, we have been treated to uh, a spectacular night of fights. And, uh, Jamie, it's certainly a, a good good experience, a fun experience to be a part of history. Oh, for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, I was, I never thought nine months ago, ten months ago when I went to the state legislature that we'd actually be able to get get real MMA in Arizona. So this is definitely a, this is definitely a treat for me as a fight fan to see to be able to see a real show. Third round almost done, and it looked as if Sariva was looking for some something to do with Henderson's ankle, maybe go for a, a, some type of submission attempt he, from the leg, a heel hook? Yeah, it looked like a heel hook, uh, but that was just uh, too little too late, man. He should have been doing that from the beginning. Beginning of the third round, from the beginning of the fight, he should have been putting those attacks together. Henderson, Henderson uh, for sure walked, is gonna walk away with that victory. He looked, he looked great in that fight, very explosive, and uh, I see him making an impact in one of the big shows, whether it be UFC, WEC, or even Strike Force. And now, as with uh, all fights that go to a decision, we sit and wait for the judges' scorecards, but I don't think there are going to be any surprises uh, in this fight here this evening. Of course, you see Del Hawkins there helping <laughs> towel off, uh, actually helping uh, get that shirt on Ben Henderson. Those two guys train together. They know and respect each other all too well. John Crouch, they're certainly very, very proud of Ben Henderson and, and the performance he's put on tonight. Oh, and, and look at Alvin Robinson back there. That, that was a terrific display of MMA. That was a complete fighter. That was, he had his ground game together. He had his striking together. His wrestling was on point. That, that was definitely a great, great fight. And uh, that, was, that was good. That was the best MMA fight, I would say, in Arizona's history, for sure. Let's go up to Shad Dales to get our winner for tonight's event. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. The winner out of the red corner, Ben Come on over. Let's talk about this victory tonight. Coming into tonight, you were six and one. Five of those wins came by submission. But I think tonight you proved to MMA fans everywhere that not only are you good on the ground, but you can throw leather, man. Uh, I wanted to kind of come in and prove that I'm not just a ground guy. My coach is jujitsu all the way. So I was going to come and show that I got some other skills. 
I have to ask, with a fight resume in such a short amount of time that you've amassed, have anybody at Elite XC, UFC, any of those guys come calling yet, or are they behind the, behind the wheel on that? I'm sorry, I don't mean to change the subject, but uh, sure. can I just say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? So yeah, any uh, UFC, Strike Force, Elite XC, any of you guys? Hello, my name's Ben Henderson. I don't know what they're waiting for, but you'd be a hell of an addition to their lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your hometown favorite, Ben. Henderson!